So for the second part of this tutorial, we're going to model uh, some Christmas balls. Now, we're going to model one basic one and then see how we can manipulate it um, and make it into something a little more funky. So first off, what I'm going to do is going to use a geosphere. You can also use a sphere for this, depending on um, what your workflow is like. Both will work. I just like using a geosphere because we have um, a nice even distribution of the polygons. Then for the default ball, we're actually pretty much done with the base shape. Um, so I'm going to move this aside and make a quick copy. And I'll show you how you can add some variation to it. Make sure we make it a copy as well so we're not instancing everything. And now it's time to add a few modifiers. So um, first off, let's up the segments a little bit to make our shape a little smoother. Just Make sure you arrive at something that works quite well, uh, and that way it'll look nice. Then, for the first part, we'll add uh, an FFD, 4x4x4. Four by four by four. We'll select the bottom by going into the control points. We can select the control points of the FFD. We'll select the bottom, bring those down a little bit, maybe these a little bit as well, or bring them up. There we go. And we're going to add a second FFD, and this one is going to be a cylinder. Um, the reason I'm adding this one is it allows to set a number of points. So we're going to bring the radial and the height down to the minimum, because we're just going to work in one axis, basically, and give it 12 sides. Again, if we go into the control points here, you can select them. I'm going to select, I'm going to skip every single uh, going to skip through them so we'll select the two points then not select them select the two points again and what this will do is when we scale them out it'll give us a, a nice kind of cool shape we can work with and this is why the slightly higher segments uh, on the geosphere were quite important so we get a nice even distribution and we still get a nice shape then the last thing you can do is add another modifier in this case I'll add a twist and if we add this then we get some cool ornamental Christmas balls going on. All right, then the next step applies to both of them. We'll just add an edit poly, select a few of the top polygons, maybe not select those, bring them out a little bit, we'll extrude them, and this way we have a nice little extra part. Um, what are we going to model here? We're going to model the little attachment. A Christmas ball usually goes up into this little gold thing with a loop so we can hang it around branches. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to delete the top because we don't really need it. Um, the inside is usually open in real life as well, so we can base ourselves on that. It'll work just fine. Then I'm going to select all of these. Uh, I'm going to click detach. Well, not detach, but actually the options for detach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to detach it to an element and as a clone. So that way we have the same set of polygons, but in a different element. So we can manip manipulate them separately. So bring these out make them a little bigger, bring them up just a little bit. And then we're going to cap the top, maybe bring up this top polygon a little bit more, hit Alt X to make the object transparent. Just make sure that we have enough separation here. And the reason why I'm keeping this fairly low poly is because when we add a turbo smooth, we can actually get a nice result. But the only thing that's left adding uh, in the edit poly is some supporting edges. So I'm going to inset these and I'm going to make a ring selection and connect these press OK bring those up a little bit and when we turbo smooth it now we'll actually get a nice top on the uh, Christmas decorations so on x-ray this now the disadvantage of using a geosphere is you get kind of weird geometry um, if we'd, we would have used a sphere it would have been a little nicer especially when we turbo smooth but seeing that they're quite small in the image um, won't really notice it 
you can bring it down a little bit so it's not as bad or um, go really extreme if you want to but I found that just one or two iterations is more than enough then with this one almost done we're gonna do the same thing for the geosphere here maybe up the segments a little bit so our top isn't as big again add an edit poly bring out those top polygons Make sure we don't have anything else selected extrude them up delete the top select all the edges here or sorry select all the polygons rather detach them again to an element and as a clone that way we can select the separate element bring it out scale it up just a little bit and bring it up just so there's a nice shape kind of going into it um, if you look at a real one it's quite similar so that way we keep a little bit of a realism in there as well again cap the top and all that's left to do is our supporting edges so inset Select all these, uh, sorry, select all these edges again. Connect them up, press OK, and just bring them up. We're working in one axis anyway. Again, we can turbo smooth this. And we get quite a nice result. So that's two variations done quite quickly. Um, the only thing that's left is to add the little loop at the top. So we're just going to draw a torus. Make it way smaller. And all that's left is just kind of fitting it on there. Again, snap it so we're turning it 90 degrees. Oh, sorry. Add it on. Uh, another thing you could do is if you hit the Align tool, this one, or Alt-A, you could easily align all the different positions. If you align X and Y, and not C, then you'll actually get the torus aligned quite nicely. Bring it up a little bit, maybe bring the radius in. Make sure it isn't too big, and there we go. Before we attach this, we'll make sure that we have not too many sides, because um, we're going to be turbo smoothing it anyway, so we might as well bring down the segments a little bit. Um, maybe bring these down to like 12. And copy this one, bring it over to the other decorative one, and there we go. All that's left to do now is go back to our edit poly, attach that one. Same for this one, edit poly, attach it, and we're done. Now, what we can do as well is just collapse to the editable poly. That way we still have control over the turbo smooth, but all the modifiers are gone, um, and we don't have to worry about messing those up in the future. Again, collapse two. Yep. And there we are. So that's these two decorative items done, and we can move on to the next part.